Hey everybody, today I have a video for you on the max, the min, the argmax, and the argmin of a function. So you might be like, what are those last two things? Like, I know what max and min are because it's pretty obvious, but what's argmax and argmin? Well, I'm going to get to that in a few minutes. First, I just want to give a formal definition of max and min, okay? So we know what the maximum and the minimum are of a function. You don't even have to know calculus or analysis to do that. You just know it's the maximum value, right, or the minimum value. So what's the highest point for the max and the, min and the lowest point for the min? So in this case, uh, the max is obviously f of a or f of b because they're the same. Um, and the min is x, x0, uh, or f of x0, basically. Um, so let me, let me kind of explain more for anybody if they're lost. So we have this function on this interval from x0 to x1, okay? And it reaches this point A here and this point B, and they're both the maximum because that's the highest point. The function doesn't go any higher than that. But it's not that A and B are the maximum. It's actually f of A and f of B that are the maximum. Um, and I mean, they're the same, so you can just say the maximum is f of A or the max is f of B. Um, and the minimum is f of x0 because, you know, there's no lower point on the function. So in this case, these are the maximum, maxima, and these are the minima, basically. Um, so, so that's pretty much all there is to it. But what exactly, how do you define that? Well, really, it's not hard. You just say that the maximum, so let me put this over here. So the maximum uh, of a function, f of x, and you actually have to specify the interval. So this interval is from uh, x0 to x1. And I'm using a closed interval. Um, you could have an open interval, but it's really not useful. It's best to have a closed interval. Um, I'm actually not totally sure if you can even have an open interval, but whatever. Let's just stick to closed intervals regardless. So. The maximum on this interval, because again, we could restrict, we could say, okay, well, let's think about the maximum on this interval, right? Or on this small interval or something like that, right? Um, but let's say we're going to do the entire interval from x0 to x1. Now, you could even have the whole interval as, as the real numbers, all, all real numbers, or just the integers, or a whole like set, like a different set. Uh, it's, it's really whatever you're working with, okay? Um, so the maximum of this function is equal to some number, uh, and I'm not going to, I'm going to stay away from this example, I'm just going to say it's equal to some number, I'll call it c, okay, such that, so such that, that's, that's what that abbreviation means, uh, such that f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x in the real numbers, okay? And that's what that symbol means, for all, okay? So I can write that down, that's for all. I just wanted to save some space there. Um, so pretty much I'm saying that f of c, whatever value this is, which in this case is f of a and f of b, um, it's gonna be greater than every single other value, f, f of x on that interval, interval. So, and that makes sense, that should make some intuitive sense to you, uh, that it's going to be greater than everybody else. Now, the reason why the equal to sign is there is because it can occur at multiple times, right? I'm not saying that this is the only value. Uh, I'm not saying that there's only one value that actually reaches up here, right? Because obviously A and B here, they both reach that same value. So there could be multiple, right? Uh, and the minimum is similarly defined. So minimum of f of x on that interval, so again, we specify the interval from x0 to x1, uh, and I'm going to call that equal to d, such that f of d is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the real numbers. Okay, actually, no, not the real numbers. It is just whatever interval we're working with. So it could be the real numbers, but um, let's say abstract. Uh, actually, if we wanted to be totally abstract, we would just use any set, but let's just stick to intervals because that's the easiest to think about. Okay, so what about argmax and argmin? Because I said something about that earlier, but never defined it. So the argmax, so let me just write it out first. We have argmax, 
of f of x. And again, we are defining it on this interval from x is 0 to x1. So what is it? It is all the numbers that actually attain that maximum value. It's all the x values that get our function to attain that maximum. So in this case, it would be a and b, because f of a attains that maximum, and f of b also attains that maximum. So a and b are the argmax. Well, they're elements of the argmax, right? Because this, like, like, you should kind of understand that, like here, there could be multiple values that get us to reach that maximum. There's one maximum, but there could be many values that get us to that maximum, right? So this is actually a set. These two are not sets, but the argmax is a set. And it contains all of these. So in this case, it is just a and b, but in general, um, I'm going to say that it is, uh, I'll just call them uh, k, yeah, all k, uh, such that, so I'm going to use that notation for such that, um, f of k is greater than or equal to f of x, and again, for all x on that interval, x is 0 to x1, right? And so that's the argmax. It's all of these k values, which in this case are a and b, that get us to reach that maximum. And the argmin is very similarly defined. So let me write it out and I'll explain it after. So I used l as the variable here. So I'm saying that the argmin on that interval is all l values such that f of l is less than or equal to f of x for all, uh, for all x values in that interval. And in this case, we just have one, but it's still a set. It's just a set of one element. So in this case, that set would just compose of x0, right? So the minimum is f of x0, and the argmin is x0. The maximum is, um, is f of a or f of b. They're the same, so it doesn't matter. And the argmax is a and b, so both of them in that set. So basically, that's it. So that's some pretty easy analysis for you guys. I uh, think if like in calculus, you wouldn't use these notations, but uh, it's good to kind of keep that in the back of your head. Um, so yeah, basically I just wanted to uh, do a little video on that just to show you guys some cool stuff in math. Um, and I'm sure you guys knew about these, but not about these. So, you know, learn something new. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.